Well, our next topic today is soil erosion, and you can probably see in the hills back behind us there, erosion has been an issue on our farm really ever since our farm was set up because we have a lot of hills where we're at. Some of our ground is what they would call highly erodible land. And if you're going to do a great job of farming, you have to do everything you can to try to preserve your soil because as farmers, all we can really farm well is that topsoil. And if we've got a lot of topsoil, we're in pretty good shape. If we're down to two or three inches because of erosion or maybe less, like in Darren's case, then it's just not gonna work very well. We're not gonna get a good crop. Well, the tough thing is that a lot of the farmers that, that farmed that ground decades ago didn't have the tools that we've got right now. And I'm not talking about the equipment that we have right now necessarily, as much as the weed control options. And when it came to weed control back when my grandpa was farming, that meant you better get off your butt and get out there and do some cold <laughs> cultivation or do some early spring tillage, do some fall tillage. We just had a till, 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 yep. and that left that soil vulnerable to erosion whenever we got a rain. Yeah, and I'm giving Darren, or some wind. Yeah, and I'm giving Darren a hard time because he just bought a farm last fall that is so terribly eroded, all the topsoil in some spots in this particular field, all the topsoil is gone. And, you know, obviously there's nothing Darren could have done about that. He just got it. But the point now is we've got to try to build that soil back up. And that's not an easy or quick process. So we really don't want to have to go through that at all. We'd rather preserve what we've actually got out there. And the other question too, Brian, is can you actually build more topsoil Absolutely. eventually over time? You know, it's yep. not a quick thing where, you know what, I want six more inches of topsoil on my ground so I can just have that next year. You can't do that without big dirt moving equipment moving topsoil in. To actually uh, create more topsoil, you have to keep the residue there and fertility and, and many things that we'll talk about here. Okay, well, in terms of preserving the topsoil that you have right now, what a lot of farmers have done around the country is they've gone to minimum tillage or strip till or best of all, no till. The issue that farmers have with no-till, obviously there's a lot of residue you have to deal with, like in this particular field here, we've got some residue that's on the soil and you wanna do a good job seeding that next crop. Well, that's kinda of hard to do when there's all this residue you have to fight through. The other thing is, when you have all that residue, it holds the cold air down in the soil in the northern U.S. So in other words, let's say in the spring, the ground isn't going to warm up as quickly. So early spring warm up, fighting through the residue to get, a, get your seed planted well. Those are the two main problems that we've got with no-till. One of the biggest things I like about doing reduced tillage or no-till is you stop erosion in a couple of different ways. One, by leaving that residue out, you definitely stop water erosion. So if you've got a rainfall, the soil is not going to move because the residue is going to hold it in place. The other thing is wind erosion, especially in the fall and winter. You see when fall tillage is done, many times some of that soil will blow and you'll actually see it in the snow drifts in the ditches and that just makes me sick. I don't think that needs to happen. In many cases we could leave a little more residue out there and try and hold that soil in place. Well one of the things we've been talking about a lot in the last three years is tiling on farms and and with tile, it allows farmers to reduce erosion there as well. Because think about it, even if you had a no-till situation like right here where we've got all kinds of residue, if you get a great big rain, you know what? You're gonna have some degree of erosion because some of that water is probably going to run off the field. Well, if you've got drain tile underneath your ground, it's going to take out excess water and lower your water table down. So when a rain comes, it can absorb the most possible that soil can hold. If you don't have drain tile on your farm, then a lot of times you'll end up with saturated soils and your soil can't absorb any more when a rain hits. So all the rainwater has to run off carrying more soil with it. What's kind of interesting to me is how farmers place tile to try and catch that water as it comes down. Typically they're running across the side of that hill to try and catch that water as it right, comes, but just it's, like we're doing with our planting. We're planting, say. we're planting on the contour, planting around crossways on the hill rather than up and down on a hill. That way you've got a row every few inches to stop that water as it's coming and slow that momentum down so you're lessening any chance of erosion. Yeah, and obviously there are other things you can do to stop that water from coming down the hill quickly, like putting in terraces. Darren's got some on his ground. We've got some around our farm because we do, again, have some hilly ground. We also have a lot of grass waterways. So if you've got a path, there's a little valley where a lot of water is gonna come through in a particular watershed in a big rain event. If you have that grass waterway, that's going to help 
prevent erosion from going through there. So if there was dirt to wash out of the field, it might get caught by that grass waterway. The biggest issue though is you can't just put in a grass waterway and come back 50 years later and expect it's gonna be perfect. You have to do continual maintenance with just about any of these things, whether it's terraces or even farming on the contour, grass waterways, it does require maintenance as you go along as a farmer. And again, if you do end up with a situation like Darren did where he bought some ground that was very heavily eroded, well, for that matter, even this field that's, that's right next to us too, when I picked up that ground about 10 years ago, there was a lot of erosion that had occurred. So what I did is I went in and I've planted nothing but corn for almost 10 years now. You wanna use a crop that has a lot of residue, able to produce a lot of organic matter. And remember, when you're trying to build organic matter in soil, the root mass is the most important thing. It's not all the above ground stuff. So you say, oh, there's all kinds of above ground residue. That's awesome. You know what? It really doesn't make all that much difference. What you care about is the root mass below ground. That's where you can re really build soil organic matter. Well, once again, soil erosion is a huge issue for us on our farm and for everyone around the world. And we as farmers have to show society we can do a good job of protecting our soil, trying to hold it on our farms, reducing overall erosion to keep our waters clean around the country. And for that matter, keep our ditches and everything else clean too. Remember, soil is probably the most valuable, the most important thing that you've got on your farm. It all starts with the soil. Do what you can to build it and preserve it. Well, one thing you can do is raise a great crop by keeping weeds like our Weed of the Week under control. Have you seen this weed on your farm?